All right, and so in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to handle cash expenses in QuickBooks Online. And handling itself in QuickBooks Online is actually very simple and straightforward. But what I wanna go over more is an understanding of the full debits and credits. We're gonna look at in a little, quick little Excel file in order to really go over that to get a full understanding of what needs to be happening. Because I see mistakes in this all the time. One of the big mistakes is just forgetting to enter them at all because a lot of the time when you're categorizing expenses in QuickBooks Online, you're using your bank feeds, which is your set up with your bank account or credit card account. And so they automatically come through so you remember to categorize them as they come. But whenever you pay someone in cash, you have to make a note outside of separately, uh, whatever, however you're keeping track of cash expenses. And then you need to go in and enter them manually into your uh, QuickBooks Online. And one of the big downsides to forgetting to enter these is number one, your, your profit is overstated. So you're, you know, you're not tracking all of your expenses. So that's not good for tracking your, in terms of management reporting, but also too, you're just missing out on potential tax deductions. If you have, you know, if you're not entering all of your business expenses then you're just paying more taxes than you need to. So that's the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes is just not entering them period. But then I'll show you two of some other mistakes. And if you just use this like step one, I'm, I'm going to go over a step one that needs to happen first and then a step two, no matter what. And if you make sure that both of those two things are happening with your debits and credits, then you should be all good in terms of how you handle it in QuickBooks Online. So before we get into QuickBooks Online, let's just look at this quick little spreadsheet here so I can explain of what actually needs to be happening in order to accurately track your cash expenses in QuickBooks. So what we have here is just the first thing that needs to happen and the second thing that needs to happen. So the first thing that needs to happen, so in this particular case, we're just gonna, we're just gonna treat this as one cash on hand account. I know some businesses, they, they have separate cash on hand accounts and that's a little bit more complicated, not too much more complicated, but for this, we're just gonna say that there's one cash on hand account. So this account tracks all the cash if you have a physical drawer uh, like for a POS or something, it tracks the cash in there. All the all the cash that you're coming in from sales, it's including that. And then if you pull cash out of that drawer to pay somebody, which is we're, we're, what we're going to go over, it's all going to be in the same cash on hand account. There's just small little changes here if you have multiple accounts. But so what hap what needs to happen first, no matter what, is that you first need to have a debit in that cash on hand account before you are able to pay somebody. On your books and then you're also going to have a credit to counteract that so the credit is going to differ depending on how the cash originally got into the into the hands of the business so for the most part this will either be a sale so you sold something and someone paid you paid you in cash and this is cash that you haven't deposited yet on your books or it could be a bank account withdrawal so an atm withdrawal so you use your debit card in the ATM and you pulled out cash for the business. That would be the other way that this would be credited. Or it could be an owner's investment. So the owner or partner took personal cash and either paid someone directly for a business expense or they put money into the drawer at any point. Into the drawer, I'm saying, for as in um, business cash. So you should always have separate business and personal cash no matter what. It's very important. So the first step, no matter what, is debiting the business cash in your books. And in order to do that, if it's a cash sale, it's, you know that's just however you're handling your cash sales in QuickBooks, that's how to originally be entered. Um, ATM withdrawal, most likely you'll see that on your bank feed, it'll say ATM withdrawal. And then if it's an owner's investment, then you're gonna wanna make a, a journal entry for that. Here's a, a couple, before we go into QuickBooks, here's a couple of important things I wanna go over here. I would recommend, even though you might say sometimes, sometimes you can kind of, merge these two steps into one step and you'll get the same end result. But I would still always just make separate these two steps, make one a debit and a separate entry and then one a credit. So we already went over the cash sale. If it's an ATM withdrawal, when it hits your bank fee to ATM withdrawal, then what you can do is transfer that money from your bank account to your cash on hand. And that'll bench and that'll do what that'll do is that'll debit your cash on hand and that'll credit your bank account. So let's just quickly go over first the, the journal entry here. So if it's an owner's investment or if it's ATM withdrawal. Again, the ATM withdrawal, that would just be a transfer. And this can be done either separately or on your bank fee. 
So it'd be a transfer from your bank account to cash on hand. And that's pretty straightforward. And again, what that's doing is creating the debit and cash on hand and the credit to your bank account. Next would be if it's in some sort of owner's investment. So what that would be is a journal entry. So if you hit plus new in the top left here, and then you go down over to other, and then right here to journal entry. So you put in the correct date, name it, whatever you want. And again, you would just basically what you're doing is just creating this manually. So you're debiting your cash on hand account. You're crediting your equity account for whatever the owner's investment is. And then you put in the correct debits and credits of however much cash the an owner or a partner or whoever is investing into the business. Before you ever enter a cash expense in QuickBooks Online, make sure that this first step at some point has already been done. So make sure that the cash that you're using has already been debited into your QuickBooks Online. This is a big mistake I see is that cash from whoever, wherever it's pulled from is categorized as a business expense, but it was never actually debited into your business books in the first place. So always make sure this first step is done. And again, it's usually probably from one of these three situations, and that's how you handle them in QuickBooks. Once that first part is handled, then the second part is, is, is easy. So the second step now is entering the cash expense. So I know this is a long lead up to just how to enter a cash expense, but it's really important that this first step is handled first. But once you do this second step, then essentially what you're doing is you're debiting an expense account, which is basically just increasing an expense account. And then you're crediting the cash on hand, which is lowering the cash on hand. So there's two ways to do this for the most part in, in QuickBooks Online. So the first step, and we'll go over this, is an expense with cash on hand selected as the payment account. And the second one is just a, is just a regular, again, journal entry. So if you go into QuickBooks Online, if you go in the top left here, under new, under vendors, you see this expense here. And you would do the expense as you always do. So enter the correct payee. And the most important part here is under this payment account section here. So under this payment account, you hit this down arrow, and then here is where you'll select your cash on hand account. And then once you do that, you know everything else is the same, the right date and everything. And then under here is where you'll select your expense category for, for whatever it was. And what this will do once you create this is it'll, it'll create basically this journal entry. It'll debit this expense account, which increases it, and it'll credit this payment account, which is this cash on hand. Another way to do it, probably the expense with if just remember to select cash on hand as your payment method is the most straightforward. But if you're more comfortable with journal entries, you can do the same thing with the journal entry. And again, you're, you're basically creating the same exact transaction. You choose the date, name it, whatever you want. You choose the account as the expense account to debit and then credit again, cash on hand. So this is how it would be done. And, you, and, it, and of course, you add the payee and everything as well to the, to the expense. So this is how you would handle it as a journal entry for cash expenses. Again, both of them are basically just accomplishing the same exact thing. So really, the process itself in QuickBooks Online of entering cash expenses is really straightforward and simple. The main thing is just choosing that cash on hand account as the payment method and then enter the expense as normal. But I think the main thing is that number one, you remember to enter cash expenses, but number two, to make sure that whatever cash on hand you're crediting, that first it was debited at some point in your QuickBooks Online file. All right, so I wanna thank you for watching my video or my videos if this isn't my first video that you're watching. And I wanted to give a quick update. So one of my big goals for this upcoming year is to grow my email newsletter list. And the reason for that is because I always wanna be able to provide you guys with free training content, such as this video, for example. And I don't always wanna rely on social media algorithms such as YouTube. So having this email list, I have in a direct um, communication with you in order to always be able to provide, no matter what happens in the social media realm, I'll always be able to provide directly to you these kind of resources. And if you are interested, so here's the link up here. So it's essentially hyphenintentional.com slash newsletter. And of course, it'll be linked in the description. And I do apologize if you have trouble reading this. Um, if you do, you can go to this link and it's written out on a, you know, on a web page of all the details of what this is. What I ask of you to give is your first name and your email address. And if you do um, do that, then what you'll initially receive whenever you sign up is uh, I have a one hour 
QuickBooks Online training webinar session that I did. So for my local chamber of commerce here. And then also too, I have a business foundation PDF, I call it. And so I got a lot of requests for people who were initially starting up their own small business. So kind of what they need to do from a legal and kind of accounting standpoint to get everything set up such as opening up an EIN, opening, using that EIN to open up a separate business bank account, setting up your um, bookkeeping and accounting software, things like that. And I know most of you probably already have your own small business set up, but it could still be beneficial because you can use this as a guide to make sure that that foundation is there. And if it's not, then you can start setting it up um, at any point really. And then also too, so the daily sales checklist. So one of my most popular videos is a daily sales um, sales entry method of using clearing accounts in QuickBooks Online to enter sales. And so I have a checklist of the accounts for that. So you'll receive that as well, if that would be beneficial for you. And then ongoing. So my plan is to send just one email a month at the end of every month. What those emails will include is most importantly, so these type of videos that I'm already creating on YouTube, I'll be linking those and sending those directly to your email. So again, we don't always have to rely on social media algorithms. And for the time being, these videos will include, of course, QuickBooks Online training videos, but also too, I'm gonna to start introducing more of small business and entrepreneur management accounting type videos. So talking about creating goals for your business and creating uh, monthly budgets in order to align with those goals. And so things like that. So, and also to links, resources, and updates to anything in the small business accounting and finance world just to keep up to date on what the changes in the industry and how those affect small business owners um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll also be including those. And then finally, last, I'll be including some travel and adventure updates on my own personal front in these emails. And so the reason for that, one of them is to keep me accountable so I don't get too comfortable because I believe one of the big things that's important for small business owners is to have a why and a reason as to why you have your small business in the first place in terms of how to support you and your own goals. So of course, you you know, a big part of your small business is helping others in, a, in a certain ways, but I also believe it's important to have a vision of how your business is going to support you on a personal front. And I know this isn't everyone's goal, but my hope is that if I send these updates on these goals, so like one of them, for example, is to travel to all 50 states, depending on when you're watching this video. So right now I'm at state 45 out of 50, and then I'm flying to Hawaii in two weeks, and that'll be state number 46. And my hope is by the end of this year, I'll be able to go to all 50 states. So that'll be one of the updates, for example, per month is what state I'm at, what number, and what my plans are and where I've been. And I know that that's, that's not everyone's goals, or that's not even what anyone's or everyone's interested in is travel and adventure. But I just wanted to hopefully maybe ins give some inspiration and at the very least give some reminders on a monthly basis to have your, your business support you and your personal goals. Because even if your goal is to spend more time with your kids, more time with your family, or just more leisure time. Because I know from experience and from myself and from working for a lot of small business owners is they initially have this personal goal where they want to have their business support them personally, and then they get so caught up in the day-to-day -day and the growth and everything of their business that they forget to actually make time in order to do these type of things for, for, your, uh, for your personal life. So my, my hope is, again, maybe some inspiration, hold myself accountable, but also to um, remind you again on a monthly basis to take some time to think about why you're creating your business and growing your business and how it's going to support you in your, in your own personal or family life. Again, I really thank you guys for watching. And if you are interested in this, um, again, here's the link here and I'll provide it down below. Thanks again.